this final episode, we're going to be looking at adding some musical elements using Propeller Head's figure. And this is really just to round everything off and, you know, the whole concept of building these ideas on the move and taking them into the studio to complete. So starting off with figure, I'm going to see what this has to offer in terms of adding a musical element to the track. So what we need to do is to come to the song and switch the tempo. So this is 123 to match what we've got already. And I'm going to play the track. Just going to turn it down a little bit my sight and I'm going to go over to the lead area. I'm just going to play around and see what we got. Now this is a great interface. This over here is a series of different patterns that you can trigger. So each number represents a different pattern. You can define the range and then we've got this scale steps here to create some variation musically. I'm not really feeling that. I'm going to switch to another one. I'm looking for something quite deep and moody. All of these are quite kind of riffy, um, almost electro-y. Now, I quite like that in terms of an abstract texture. Maybe that could be good for something. But the, the vibe that I've got this beat and percussion, I'm not really feeling these are the right kind of sounds. And it is a preset only device. We can't make up our own patches. So we're gonna have to make the most of what we've got here. That's not bad. vibes on there. I'm going to go the other way. I've got a feeling there are some here that I've missed out at the very beginning. So you can see it's a very simple interface, really easy to use. And uh, let's have a look. Okay, here we go. That's more like it. Just going to reduce the amount of scale steps. Take the range down. Going to take the rhythm off. So now I'm defining the pattern. Take the amount of scale steps up. That's pretty good. Let me just adjust the range. Too high. So I think that's going to work. So let me get that in. So that's good. Let's just leave that playing. Let's take a look at tweaks. This is where we can add some effects.
Now I like that, I think that could sound great with some filtering coming from Ableton. So I'm gonna record that into Ableton. So let's stop that for the moment. Let's solo this and let's record. I'm gonna change the position of the start of it as well. Let's add some modulation. So I'm recording a variety of different changes here into the performance because the effect here I will not be able to manipulate inside Ableton. nice little decay on there as well on the sound let's take a look at that just going to stop it and let's have a look so just going to set the one there first and then i'm going to reposition that start um possibly over here let's have a listen to that well, that's where i think it should start Let's try it out with the beat. It's gonna drop in an effect. It's gonna compress this. So that's gonna basically give a more consistent level considering the modulation is changing the level quite a lot. Drop in the filter. Okay, so that's great. So I think Figures brought something really quite interesting there. That's the sort of thing that I wouldn't have come up with under normal circumstances. So just gonna say here, Figure Chords. So to stop you getting bored, I spent some time just experimenting with a couple of other bits. I put an MS-20 bass from the Korg MS-20, another little texture from the figure here, and this is the end result. I'll play it through and I'll solo some elements for you. The MS-20 was played in live, okay, so it's loose, I haven't quantized that. So that's it. A little bit of an arpeggiated texture, really quiet in the background. Now with the percussion, I just added an auto filter to give it a little bit of an extra texture and some ping pong delay here. The figure chords, open the filter here. But I like them closed. So, Hopefully you've seen there that using the iOS apps, you can get a fresh approach to composition. It means that you can prepare some elements on the move and then also just use these apps as new instruments that you can record into your DAW. At Point Blank Online, you've got two methods of interaction with your tutor. Firstly, you've got the weekly online masterclass, which is in real time. And then also we've got feedback on your assignments, and that's known as DVR. So the online masterclass is a one hour session you get with your tutor every week. You can ask questions about the lesson content and get instant feedback and also demonstrations on the fly from their computer desktop with our streaming technology. DVR stands for Direct Video Response, and the concept is really simple. You upload your Ableton Logic or Cubase project file to your tutor, he downloads it, and then pushes record on the screen capturing software, and evaluates your work, so basically giving you one-to-one -one feedback. 
You'll see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. We have found the DVR process has truly revolutionized the way that we teach online and the results speak for themselves. Book your place on a course now by visiting pointblankonline.net.